Hi, you just caught me. Um, I was playing around this morning with these two little owlers, two little barn owl chicks that I actually bred many years ago. And I uh, started sketching them this morning before I went to the gallery and to work. And I felt it would be nice just to complete this as a little picture for you later on today if we got the chance. And I have got the chance, so let's roll that intro and let's see how we get on. Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said just now, I, I was going to paint these two owlets. Now, I started the drawing this morning just after breakfast and I was just scribbling around on a piece of spare watercolour paper and I, I didn't have time to do any more to it and I was going to finish it this evening and I felt during the course of the day it might be nice to do a nice watercolour tutorial for you. I bred these owls many, many years ago. I used to keep a lot of birds of prey and I used to breed several barn owls among other um, birds and I've, I sort of photographed them during different times of their uh, development as chicks and it's amazing that these birds are just a couple of days apart in age and yet there is such a significant difference in them so anyway I've kept the photographs all these years and I felt I came across them the other day and I felt I'd like to sketch them and then I felt that they would make a great idea for a tutorial. So that's what I'm going to do. And without further ado, let's get on. Let's just see how they turn out. So what I was doing was just making a few final ref uh, bits and changes in the structure and taking a lot of the graphite off as well. This is a piece of hot pressed paper from uh, the Artistico uh, Extra White. It's 100% cotton, which is fantastic, and it's hot pressed, which is very, very smooth. And it's a 300 gram or 140 pound block. Now, I don't mind 140 pound paper when it is in a block because you can uh, play around with that and do what you like with it to a point and get away with it. But that's because it is gummed down on all four sides by a little bit up in the top here where you can then get a credit card under and lift it for another painting. This is a lovely um ultramarine violet it's a beautiful violet blue so i'm going to leave that and i want the mixes very weak very like very much like tea and then i'm going to come in with a very pale raw sienna and that's my raw sienna and these are going to sit there until they're called upon and first and foremost we're going to come on with this one I just want to look at some of the sort of fur that the very fine downy look of fur that these little birds have got and it's this one's full of it of course this one is starting to molt out a little bit but it just makes for a nice softness <laughs> First pass certainly on this bird pretty much sorted out now what I do want to do is suggest some of the background at this point because I don't want this to dry up as hard lines so I want to bring in some stronger colors some strength in there some nice uh, areas so that these two can start to bleed and blend together
up a little faster than I am to be quite honest with you because I am not doing this speedily enough and I want to create a lot more light between one area so I'm going to have to come in I think on the background colors and make them stronger at some point but let's layer this in first let's see how that goes let's observe it see where the paint finishes up and see what we feel that we need to do further into this painting let's bring that down through here to drop into that a little bit of blue in the form of the um, neutral tint which is this one and this is the uh, Daniel Smith one it's slightly the bluer version I'm just going to put in the suggestion of these beautiful little feather color that lovely cool color that we see in the one that I actually painted of Hootie quite recently Many of you have done that little tutorial and I've seen some of the paintings that you've made from that and they're really nice. I've got to say, you've really done a cracking job with that. And uh, so that's pleasing to see that it, the subject matter of my hootie um, did uh, interest people so much. So that was good. Just going to bring in a soft little bit of dark through there. And again, I just want to tap off. in here with some of this dark that we've been using and I just want to pop that into here and increase the uh, statement that we've been making thus far that that is still a bit of moisture in this so that's good let's bring that down into there back into my blue violets that's so beautiful that blue violet but I'm going to come in with some ultramarine to that and I want to add in a little bit of this carmine color it's not one I normally use this is a new one I will the details of that color are in the details of this video and any other videos that use this particular palette Leaving some areas of light. So I'm coming around with this very, very soft, pigmented, very weak solution. Thank you. 
and I really want to have some of my pyro orange very very strong orange color and firstly I'm gonna avoid these areas I'm gonna just tap that little bit off there and I want to come in and put in color around here this is the edge of the cheek and the face mask on the owl and it will sort of go in and lose a little bit underneath the down and it will then come down and to begin where it will disappear into those very very fine nasal feathers that protect the beak and the seer. come back into that and add some deeper color to that further in I just want to get this little feather going to the same degree as this one I'm just going to come in with a shape and a bit cooler color but we will very quickly change that and warm that up a bit more orange coming into this but maybe a little bit of red too before we go hurtling on into the rich warm oranges let's explore those warm red colors now we've got the sear but we've got a nice bit of light to the top of the beak and that comes around like that. bit through there down to what's called the sear or the top end of the beak if any of you keep budgery gars it's very very easily identifiable there because their two nasal um, entrances are within the sear and a male is a blue sear and a female is a brown pinky sear so that's how you can sex a budgery gar quite easily <laughs> i totally got off topic I do apologize. I'm enjoying myself anyway. It doesn't matter. Right, I'm just going to bring another layer or two over some of this. And I want to make them richer, actually. I'm diving all over this painting. if this is working out I hope it is let me do something now that I've been itching to do let's get some um, let's get some of our lovely neutral tint that red version of neutral tint let's come in with some Payne's gray and make it even cooler nice dark but it's quite a 
um, transparent dark but let's just come in and let's put our first layer for the eyes to our bows now this these are really important now gonna get this shape maintain it and keep it nice and very very smooth use a much finer brush if you've got one if you would like to but there we are now I'm pretty sure we're not far off with that but I will probably put another layer into this this is going to dry because it's transparent paint it's not got the opacity of course therefore it will lack a little bit as it dries it will dry much paler Let's come up the side here of this area here where the mask is forming and it's got a little deeper shadow and it is ever so slightly warmer than the other shadows that we've been putting in. There we go. Let that go off around the back there. I'm going to be using some more blue. Luckily now this blue is a little wetter so it is um, allowing the paint to come off that pile of paint where this is all dried up it's always good when you set out to start a painting if you can just to wet it up with a little spray bottle and that will allow you to make the paint move on you know and mix it up a lot easier subtle bloom of this orangey color actually no I'm gonna come in with a little bit more blue violet so I'm gonna come in with that little bit of that pinky carmine color I'm not sure what it is but I will tell you <laughs> I said um, and I just want to bring in a little bit of extra around that cheek there and around this area in here up to there okay soften it ever so slightly and I'm going to use a lot of mix now it's going to be quite a strong mix of the neutral tint and some of the Payne's gray I'm going to make a mix of that leave that to one side I'm going to come in with a much warmer orangey mix more water lots more orange into that much richer color and quite a strong mix of color too I'm just going to come in now and just start playing around.
some more darks. I'm going to use some Payne's Gray into this dark area. And my normal mix with Payne's Gray to make a really rich color is my Pyrrol Orange. I'm going to put those two together and make a much creamier mix than I have made. This has got to be strong, but I've got to wait for it. I've got to be patient now because that is all very, very wet and I need to wait. So I'm just putting in a bit more detail while I dare. Just little taps of warmth here and there just to build up the shapes. And we need some dark blue violets. They're quite dirty, so they're gonna be a little bit of orange creeping into that. Just need to create that depth in here and then here. Very deep shadowy areas. Now what would be good is if I was able to just pop back in with a bit more of this dark in here, just to fuse those two areas together. This could be a big mistake. And you can get that idea you should have left well alone. But I think that's going to create a bit of an ugly um, cauliflower mark. I think I'm pretty much done. I really am just looking for excuses at the moment to put in a little bit more color here or there. And that's when you are really risking the whole thing. So I am going to go back in here now and go back in with that mix of the pain, the Payne's Gray and my lovely Pyro Orange and make the eyes stronger, deeper, darker Press my hand very, very gently here. Just put that real dark in there. This is the time when you've got to make any final decisions about the shapes of the eye. Just finishing touches really, you've got to pay that much more attention to bits and pieces, make sure they are 
where they should be and doing what you want them to do. Okay, everybody one pair of little owlets completed now it was for me a bit of an experiment I decided that I wanted to try and paint this quite loosely now whether you feel that I achieved it or not I do not know but I had a lot of fun trying it out and that I think is the message behind this is to try and see what happens and if it doesn't work out the first time then have another go and try again and eventually you will start making the progress that you seek so that's why I did it and I will do some more of this sort of thing at night because I find it a whole lot of fun experimenting and trying something new now as always the reference for this uh, painting and the two owl chicks will be over on my patreon now it is a scan from an old photograph so it may not be as crystal digital crispness that you would expect with a with a photo reference so please allow for that but go over to the patreon download it for free do not need to be a patron to do that but heck while you're over there why not look around there is so much on offer and it's only going to cost you three five or ten dollars a month every penny of that every penny of that goes into helping me support all my filming efforts from one week to the next so that you carry on getting lots of films to enjoy and learn from so please take a look at it and i'd love to welcome you on board as my latest patrons that would be fantastic if you've enjoyed this video and you've got to the end of it with me right now then give it the thumbs up that'd be fantastic it tells youtube that the channel is a good channel worth promoting and when you do that when you help um do these things on my channel and help support my channel it it makes it so that other people around the world get to see the videos that i create not just a few it just spreads it out to so many more so give it that like and if you're not a subscriber clicking that subscribe button the bell icon and the notification tabs all those things really do help promote and push and support this channel and all the work that i keep putting in for it from one week to the next and add comments i love reading them if you've got any ideas on things you'd like to see me paint in the future please put them in the comment section below this video and any other video you wish to watch i'd love to read them i'll always answer them and i'll always get back to you if you need help so with all that said and done i'm gonna leave you now i hope you're gonna have a go at this one put your versions on the painting with paul apps page over on facebook love to see them and enjoy them so until next time i wish each and every one of you happy painting stay safe wherever you are catch you next friday take care everybody bye bye hi everybody no <coughs> i'm not doing that so again hi everybody and welcome to the channel and i i'm not doing that Hey everybody, I had a lot of fun doing that. I do hope that you did as well. Okay everybody, I had a lot of fun doing that. I do hope you enjoyed it too. And yeah, it worked out all right really, didn't it? Got something from it as well. And if you did, then have a go at yourself. Sorry, start again. I'm sure you got something from it. I hope you did, and I do hope that you'll try it and paint it yourself, like I did. Hi, everybody. No, <laughs> completely wrong. In your own version, so pop on over to the Patreon and have a look. <laughs> Download the reference and have a go at yourself. What am I on? again then
egg everybody i had a lot of fun with that and i'm sure you got a lot of lot from it i hope you did oh <laughs> you can't make this stuff up okay everybody <laughs> hi everybody now i've got to stop giggling now i've got the giggles